Thanks for joining us on the very first episode of the Launcher Farm Show. I'm super excited to be bringing this series to you because I know that a lot of people are looking for great content around geographic farming and how they can put that into their business. And in this episode, I interview Chuck Charlton from Milton, Ontario, and we go through some great topics, but I want to highlight some of the things that really stuck out. So Chuck talks about how to be authentic with your business and how that can translate into more business, but also just how to be happier with your business and be happy with where you go with it and how to make it part of your life. We also talk about why having too many leads is just as bad, if not worse, than having not enough leads at all. Some of the other things we discuss is how hyper-focusing will help you grow your business in the long run and help you get that market share you're really after. And we also talk about why your past clients are your best sources of marketing and best sources of referrals and how to get them on board. We discuss this in a lot more in the episode, so be sure to check it out. Let us know what you think. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the series as we go through it, because I know there's going to be a lot more content for you that you're going to really appreciate. And I know when I when you launch your farm, you're going to have some great ideas out of this, and I know it's going to help you for you. So check it out and enjoy. All right, so we're actually at our first episode here. We got Chuck Charlton from Milton. Chuck, why don't you take a second to introduce yourself and uh, tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Well, I'm based in Milton. I've uh, run a real estate team probably for the last, I think, 10 to 12 years uh, in the business for 17. And I have tried and failed many things. So I guess we're going to talk about both what's worked, what hasn't worked. Um, but we run a team, there's seven agents, there's two full-time admin. And, uh, you know, we just, for us is, is uh, we got clear a couple of years ago about our purpose in business. Like our Stanley Cup, our championship was to create a five-star experience for clients. And that's so everything we, we think about is how to create that. Awesome. Yeah. And, and knowing you, you can see that throughout all of the systems you put in place, all the, the way you run your business and the, the customer service you guys do. It's, it's just very prevalent with how, how much that means to you guys. Yeah, it just, but it was, it was, but when we got clear about it, it just, it just laser focused everything. You know, it was always something that we knew we liked the quality more than the quantity. Yeah. And there's still quantity there. I mean, we're still, you know, top 1% in the country, but it was, it was just one of those things where it's like, that's what really matters to us is somebody being so excited that they'd want to share the experience publicly. And that means with friends and family, but also the way that you share publicly now is with the Google review. And yeah. I mean, when we talk about farming, that is always one of my very first things I'll say to agents is, do you have reviews online on Facebook and Google predominantly is the number one, Yeah, you know, cause we have stuff in our industry, like rank my agents and all the consumers don't know that yeah. they know <laughs> Google, right? Like they go to Google and, and it's funny because anytime that I go to, to look for a business to, to, to uh, hire, if I go uh, on to Amazon to look for socks, like I'm, I'm reading the reviews. Yeah. So I can see it in my own behavior, but that to me is just the number one place that you have to start farming is having other people say good stuff about you. Yep. Yep. Instead of just promoting yourself, saying how great you are, you want other oh, people totally. to say it. Right. So why don't we take it back to kind of when you got started? I know for yourself, you moved to a whole new area. So you didn't have the connections. You didn't have the audience. You didn't have the, the following of people. So why don't you tell us like that story and how you kind of got started? Yeah, so we, we came to Milton and I knew one guy from university that lived here. We came from Toronto and he already had an agent, right? So that I'm like, well, starting from zero, basically. Um, and, and so uh, at that time, there's a program Dean Jackson launched. You and I have talked about Dean. I don't know how much you want to get into, but his, his mentorship has made a huge difference in, in I think, both of our businesses. Yep. Um, but he had a program called getting listings, which is a, uh, different twist on a geographic farming program. Uh, and so I, I used that. I said, okay, you're either spending time or money. So we had, we borrowed some money and we said, let's run this postcard program and, uh, and, and got our first listing within, I think 45 or 50 days of starting, which yeah, was the just, first just, one, the whole program, which is so good. first hundred people. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so it just, it went from there. I started, you know, we built our website, we started, uh, collecting contacts, got to the point where my wife and I were overwhelmed. Like it was the two of us working. I was doing the sellers. She was doing the buyers and, uh, and just, it got, it got to the point where, um, it lined up where we were having kids. Plus we were so busy. We couldn't, 
really even see each other. Yeah. It was like we would work for 90 days and then book a vacation and just crash and sleep for a week. Yeah. So we'd, we'd come back from a uh, vacation. We'd be recharged. We would, and then just do it all over again. And, uh, and so you do that enough and you start kind of saying, okay, that's now uh, lines up with having a family and being so busy. And we just said, we have to start a team. And, you know, at that time, teams were relatively new, like people had them, but there weren't that many small partnerships and that kind of thing was more common. Um, But yeah, we did that. So even today, I would say like the quality of life that comes from a team, not necessarily the income, because some people, they want to be team (laughs) leaders. Oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to kind of, you know, get a piece of all the action and you know, the the expenses are high, right? I mean, if you read the, uh, the millionaire real estate agent, you move from a single agent being, let's say, 70% profitable. With a team, you might only be 30 or 40% profitable. It's a vastly different thing. And the transition from one to the other is one of the hardest things for people to deal with. Yeah, it's that. And to actually replace your income, you have to scale up huge. So it's that time from when you launch that team to getting to that time where you actually replace your income or your time it can be shaky, rocky, and can take some real growth. Yeah. The truth is you have to double your transactions to make the same amount of money. Right. So, so that's why it's like when you collect the people, all of a sudden the headaches start going up and all these things. And I'm lucky, you know, my wife and I are, are good at different things, but, and the fact that there was two of us, I don't know if I could have done that whole transition from individual to team on my own. It was just, uh, just knowing what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. Once you get there, again, it's like you've reached these kind of level points in the business where thing, good things will kind of stabilize and you say, yes. okay, now we're, now we're in a, a spot that we can just take a breath. So I want to go back then to when you started that farm, how long did that take for you guys to actually start getting predictable business? And then how long did it take to get to the point where you were ready to scale up and grow the team then? Uh, so we, I think we ended up doing maybe... 10 to 15 deals in the first year because of sure. because of that farming so that's enough to kind of keep the lights on yeah we were talking before you know we're filming this summer 2020 and <laughs> the goal with any business is just keep the lights on i mean covid really kicked us all in the teeth and <laughs> but it's like we're going to be okay we just need yeah. to just manage the expenses make sure you're adding value all the all the core things that you can as a business pivot get rid of what doesn't work sure. Um, but anyway, going back to the question is, is we, um, we, I think we sort of leveled out at, uh, 20 or 30 transactions from the farm area we were working. That would have been a neighborhood of approximately 5,000 homes, I think by that time. And, uh, and that was good. And then we were doing other stuff with online business and then past clients started to repeat with us. I mean, we, like I said, we moved here, we didn't know anybody, but eventually there's the turnover. And one of the things we looked at was the, the actual turnover rates in the areas. And this was one of the big reasons we decided to move to Milton. In one uh, geographic area, there was a 17% per wow. year turnover. And I've <laughs> never seen it. And it hasn't been that high. It was like, because people were buying the homes because they were cheap. And then two or three years later, the values would go up and they yeah. just keep kind of rolling over. Um, but I, that was insane. I, w- I said to my wife, I said, even if we're just mediocre real estate agents, <laughs> right? I mean, it's like, so you just get in front of that and you're, and you're just, it's like, you know, the swarm of insects, just open your mouth and you're going to swallow a few, right? It's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So, so that was, that was a big prompting for us to, to come here, just seeing the opportunity that exists there. And I've talked about with people who some people will say they want to stay local because they live in a certain neighborhood and they choose their farm because they live there. And I tell people that's great if, if that's what you want, but there is opportunities when you look for the right area and the right farm and you look for the right kind of the perfect storm of, of an area growing or the, the right turnover, or even if there was competition in the past, that agent may be, their business may be dwindling down. So there's opportunities that when you know what you're looking for, you can really see a huge opportunity for your business. Yeah. And we, so we tried doing the, the postcards in different areas. And, and what I noticed, even observing from friends, is that the ones that were in high price points, like if you were going for more of a luxury neighborhood, yeah. for us, it was harder to break into those. Yeah. 
um, because I think number one, there's incumbents. By the time somebody reaches their sort of million dollar house, I feel like they probably have a relationship with a realtor. Yeah. And so I think we benefited from the fact that we we jumped in a neighborhood where they bought the homes from a builder. Yep. So they didn't necessarily have a real estate agent. And, uh, and I think, you know, there was obviously differences. We were more of an information farmer free report on house prices versus, you know, big picture of me, like, Hey, I'm the house sold name and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, it, it was just a different looking piece of marketing that I think was very low friction. Like, yeah, sure. I'm thinking about selling. I want to know, you know, what's going on in the neighborhood kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good point because a lot of people don't realize if people don't know Milton, Milton is a very booming area and it's grown and it went from, I believe it, from when I, my grandfather moved there, it was like 30,000 people to, I don't know what the total population is. I'm sure you know now. Yeah. But I mean, you get different answers from different people. I'd say 120, 130,000 people. So there's been a lot of growth and opportunity to grow right, with but it. There's still the core area too. And it's yep. like, we've tried to do stuff in the core and then you start looking and saying, well, some of these people went to high school with their real estate agents. Like yep. they've been around, you know, the community for 30, 40, 50 years sometimes. So uh, having those new development areas, I think, offer a good opportunity. Yeah. Um, if you're consi- if all things being equal, that's a good place to start is where there's likely not an incumbent and there's not somebody who they have a relationship with. Yeah. I remember when I first started, my, I was on a team years ago and my boss said to if i was going to start a farm to go after a subdivision that's like five to seven years old he said they kind of hit that point where they've been there they bought new and they're at that point where they're going to be turning over and that's something i've always shared with people it's like when you know what the 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 trends are in each kind of neighborhood you can start seeing opportunity and this neighborhood right now may not be a good opportunity but in five years from now it may be a good opportunity or it may have been a good opportunity for a good chunk of time but now everyone's settled in and no one's moving and, and they kind of held their ground and they're not going anywhere. Right. The, I, I found a lot of people within three or four years are just done with their first home. Yeah. Like I don't even know if they get to five years. And I had someone say to me that the, the, the average mortgage is five years and even like the term on it. And that's even done for a reason because they know that the penalties yeah. are obviously very heavy and, uh, and, and, you know, moving at three or three and a half years, you're going to have a big penalty there. Yeah. Yeah. So for you then, you started with that farm. Did you start with 5,000 homes or did you build up to that 5,000? It, it, was, it was a test thing. It was, uh, we went to the first 700 homes and then we did, we added another 1,000. Because the first month, I think we had 52 responses, wow. which was just give me the report. It wasn't yep. a come list me kind of call. Yep. And then when we expanded to another 1,000, I think we got 102 responses and you know, it just kind of carried on from there. I mean, and that's exciting, right? Like when you're a young whippersnapper and you're <laughs> right, like brand new area and you're like, I just added, you know, 150 plus people to, to a communication list. Yeah. It just, it results were bound to happen. So it was just, it was, it was fertile soil, but it was also like, it was planting the right flowers. It was just, everything just came in at the right time. And, and also the kind of stuff there, because Milton at that time is a much smaller community. Nobody was even online. Yeah. Like, like five people had websites. Right? <laughs> like it was like, and they were all like the, basically an online business card. It was just, you know, about me and buyers, sellers. And it was very generic. It was templated. And so, so we were one of the first to kind of say, okay, well, pretty sure this internet thing's going to take off. Like, I yeah. think, I think. There's, there's some legs on this internet yeah. thing. And, uh, and so that, that's where it all came from. That was our next, um, you know, it was like, okay, now we've got the geographic area, uh, avoiding the stuff where people knew each other for 30, 40, 50 years. And then the online became the next thing. Yeah. And that gets into the conversation around Milton Daily Homes. So we, you know, we were collecting emails and we were offering, you know, lists of homes and all these kind of things. And eventually enough people started asking us for, for stuff that we just, we got overwhelmed. Like I had a stack of leads like this that I didn't even get to. <laughs> it was just, and it's, that's as much of a problem as not having enough leads. Yeah. You're just burning money. It's yeah. just silly. And so, so uh, in a conversation with Dean Jackson, actually, he goes, 
well, why don't you just give them the homes? Like, just like, what's, why do you need to be the gatekeeper? Right. If that's the thing, if that's your bottleneck part of your business, that it's like you're not getting to enough people because you don't have time to call. Yeah. Then eliminate the bottleneck. Just go for it. And and so we said, okay, fine. We're gonna send emails. I think it was we started once a week and we said, here's you know, the list of everything that's uh, for sale. And uh, and that went well. That was a good thing. And then I started to to share some personal stuff too. You know, like my daughter was just born and had lots of things to share. So it's like, here's a bit about what's going on in my life. Yep. Here, sometimes even who I'm showing houses to, or what I've got. You know, that I'm going to be upcoming as far as listings. And then it was like, here's all the the homes. Let me know if you want to see something. So it was as simple as that. And it's still, you weren't promoting you as being the best, you said it's not your mug shot and how great you are and how many homes you sell in the neighborhood. You were provided that information, which is what people want. And that's well, why they would come to But you got to remember too, it's like what I would want. Yeah. I think that's a big thing that people forget is they just like, you got to put yourself in the shoes of the consumer and say, what would I want if I was in their shoes? If I, you know, it, um, I bought my first house and I'm growing out of it and I, I've got a baby on the way and, I would want somebody who is not going to engage in puffery or any sort of, I just want someone who's going to be, you know, make it entertaining, make it funny. I've always been a big guy for humor, right? Like I like that and, and just, and give it to me straight. Right. And, and I, I've heard dozens of people over the years, just give us that feedback because you just give it to me straight. You don't know what's going to happen in the market. You say, you don't know if you think things are going to be good great. Like it's, I can only just look at what's there and just say, here it is. And here's my perspective on what's going on. But, uh, but anyway, so that went really well. And then it started becoming one of those things where I'm not only going to give you the houses, I'm going to, because houses come out every day and we were doing this once a week. So we said daily, yeah. and then we're going to do it on video. And so there was a, a software called ScreenFlow that would allow you to show people what's on your screen. And then that became the genesis of Milton Daily Homes, which I've done now and continue to do. We're now in year 11 of wow. Milton Daily Homes. And that consistency is, I know for you, is the, the absolute critical key to it. Because I've seen people over the years try something, they'll do it, they'll do it for a month, two months, three months, don't get the right. results they want and they give up. And if you, if you stopped and I'm sure like if you, if you could attract how much business you would have lost by stopping at any point, like it probably would be uncalculable how much business you've lost by just giving up at one, at whatever point. Right. Well, I, I became um, very frustrated about two years ago and I just said, Oh my God, like I need a break from this. And I took a few months off and yep. it was, and, and then I came back, you know, my wife said, you know, it's good for business to keep yeah. doing this. And, <laughs> And you just, and you come with a different perspective, you learn what you like and what you don't like, and also what makes the, the engine move. Yeah. And I think what we learned was it's more important to send the email out than what's in the email, believe it or not. Yeah. The fact that you show up all the time is almost the main message. Sometimes that's even the thing, even with when you do uh, postcards and mailing, it's not even what's on it. It's just the fact that it's you're there because sometimes yeah. you don't have to be the best agent. You just need to be there when yeah. they need it. Yeah. Right That's, place, right time. Like I, I can't count how many deals I've done over the years that are just, you're there, you're sending stuff and you haven't heard from someone and I send them my monthly report and two years in all of a sudden they reach out to you. Like I've called them a bunch of times, never heard from them, emailed them, nothing. And then all of a sudden life changes in their end and they reach out and they're ready. So it's yeah, that consistency right. is, is absolutely critical. Or you just happen to pick up the phone at the right time when they wanted to hear from you. It's yeah. just, it's just one of those things where I, sometimes the way I say it is like for every agent at some point, when you start in this business, you are the worst choice imaginable. <laughs> like when you're a rookie agent, you're, you're an awful choice, but how did we all get lift off? How did we all start? Somebody took a chance on us yeah. and they took a chance because we happened to be the guy hosting the open house that yeah. they went into and, and it just went from there. So as you grew, you obviously said you got more leads and you can keep up with, and I'm sure that's kind of at the point where you start, decided to grow the team. What did that look like for you as far as keeping 
your name, your brand, your humor. Cause I find a lot of people have that fear of when they grow a team or grow a farm or grow anything where they, they want to go past themselves. They're afraid of letting go of their control over it and letting go of their name. So how did, how did that look like for you to, for you guys to expand to that next level? There's a couple things. So I think, um, to, uh, to have freedom, you have to give up control, right? Like you just, you've got to do that. You've got to be in a position where you have other people around you, where you don't have, it's, I shouldn't say this because some people have done very well by being like the agent and then having a trail of people like remora fish on the shark that just <laughs> kind of, that, that take all the leftovers yeah. after their extreme efforts. And uh, you know, these are the people that sell two, 300 homes a year. And they, and they can have a team of, you know, five or six buyers agents that are just kind of plucking things as they come yeah. off of that. Um, I don't know, for me, I never wanted to be the two or 300 sales a year. Just like I just, just I experienced that uh, at, on a much lower scale, but like doing a lot of business. And I thought, you know, I, I need to elevate people and not be afraid to, to make them better than me. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like you move from being a piece on the board to kind of being the board itself, allowing those pieces to really kind of play their game and, yeah. and do what's best. Um, so that's one of the things there. I think that in, in that transition, um, you know, it's, I think that you've got to kind of come from a place of, um, uh, abundance, right? Like if there's any scarcity that remains in your brain, any fear, mistrust or anything, it's all gonna, like, it's gonna come out eventually. And so you just recognize that the world is a big place. And I think a lot of my competitors, I've had people years later that have told me that this was a big thing is I'd sit in a room of my, my peers, locally agents. And I'd say, I'm not competing with you guys. Like when your field is better, my field is better. Yeah. If we're farmers right beside each other, if you're full of weeds, I got to fight your weeds all the time. I don't want to <laughs> do that. I'm trying to knock the guy out that's selling one or two homes a year. The guy that's coming from an hour late to list a home in our area. Yeah. There's more than enough business for, for the local hardworking, great real estate agents, we can all get our share and we're going to be just fine. Got and that's it. something I've always respected about you and your business is that for people who don't know, Milton is surrounded in the GTA by a number of other towns and cities that many agents would be very tempted to do a couple of deals here, a couple of deals in Milton, a couple of deals in Burlington, a couple of deals in Oakville, a couple of deals in Hamilton and spread themselves out. And you really just doubled down in Milton and didn't, you, I know you're going to Mississauga now, but it, by doing that, you really put your emphasis on being the local area expert in Milton and other people I'm sure you've seen over the years have maybe have said, why wouldn't you try expanding? And for you, you, I know you doubled down and, and just kept growing it. And that has I'm sure has grown your business more than a couple of deals here, and a couple of deals there that you think you're going to like, just, just spreading sure. yourself out is not worth it to me. Well, I think there's, there's different elements to it because you want to, I mean, obviously you, you, you've kind of, where, where you live is a nice place to start if the, yeah. if things look good. But um, it, we do a lot of business outside of Milton, but it's, but it's the referral stuff, right? It's like, if you keep that, that good balance between new business and referrals, because I see some agents brag, oh, well, I'm 95% by referral. And I'm like, well, you're losing opportunities. You're just not maximizing. I think the healthy business is between 30 and 70% referral like you yeah. have to be at that level and then 30 to 70 percent new business yeah because if you keep working off referrals you're going to find that just some years you're going to have a crap year because everyone's happy but nobody's moving yeah right it's just yeah. like that's the thing so new business smooths the edges a bit where it's yeah. not so up and down and and this and that um, so I've always liked that, but I think that whenever you implement some, some, some marketing, you want to think about obviously the local community first and foremost, yeah. but, uh, you know, if somebody calls me and says, I want to move to Milton, I have a home to sell in Mississauga. I have no issues with that. I mean, it, but I really look and say, am I the best person to help? Yeah. Cause you reach a certain radius where you just say, I don't know it. I have no interest in it. The drive just becomes... <laughs> onerous that you'd say, ugh, like why? Yeah. And if I can't tell like what, where the school, like, if I can't top of my mind, tell you which school is in a certain location, yeah. I, I shouldn't be doing business there. Yeah. 
And yeah. I know for you that that comes because you have confidence. Like you said, you, you, it comes from not having a scarcity mindset. You know, there's enough business to focus on that. And then the business around it outside of it will just happen instead of chasing and trying to find the outside business. You just keep focusing on what you're doing and then the repeat and referral happens and you keep doubling down in Milton and you keep getting that business just growing. Well, you do because the five watt laser cuts through steel, but the five watt light bulb can barely light a room, right? <laughs> so you can, you can be so scattered in this business, you know, where you see sometimes someone's website will say like, you know, uh, Southern Ontario real estate experts.com and you go, Really? Like, I, I mean, not to say you can't run a good business from that because you could refer people out and make yep. your, you know, referral fees and everything else. But for the most part, people who are, are laser focused are rewarded. And that goes for farming or anything else. It's yep. just like to be able to say, I, I, I will accept other opportunities, but my only thing is to just look at that. Yeah, exactly. That's where I want to be, right? For me, I've always said that when it comes to farming, my farm is actually not the 3,600 homes or the 5,000 homes. It's the people that have put their hand up and those relationships that I've built that like, so when I, we were doing the orchard, there was 3,600 homes. We ended up with 425 people in our database. To me, that for, for, farm became those 425 people. And then our energy and attention were put on those people instead of trying to keep just getting more and more and more and more people. We, we were obviously doing that, but we wanted to love on and share as much as we could with those 400 plus people. And the more you can grow of that audience that loves you and wants to hear from you and, and you build those relationships with, then you're going to get those external referrals. That's when you're going to start seeing it grow outside of it. Right. Someone who I have a ton of respect for in this business, Jeff Ham, is yep. uh, he said something interesting too. So this is your 425 were, were um, you know, like uh, marketed, like you're sort of like they're new uh, additions to the database. But Jeff said something one time, I thought it was so brilliant. He said, until you get 300 relationships and what he defined that as is like your center of influence, people that friends or whatever it is, yep. uh, former coworkers or people who have transacted with you, he said, you're always going to struggle to kind of to feel busy enough. And yep. he said, once you reach that point, now you're farming a relationship database. Yeah. So it's not about where they live necessarily. It's about the fact that they're all connected by a bond of trust to you. But he said, once you hit that, your business has a certain momentum. And I found that to be true as well. Yeah. And I would say we probably stay in touch with about 500 people. Like that's our, like where I'm at personally. And then the team members individually have their own nodes as well. And collectively we all communicate with them in, in certain ways and invite them to client parties and those kind of things. So you mentioned you grew the database pretty quickly and had a lot of people. How yes. did you select those 500 people and were they, is it just past clients that, that were in that or like how did yeah, you scale it's, it down? Basically it's, it's relationships. I didn't have a lot of previous like work relationships. I had friends, but you know how it is the first three to five years in business, nobody wants to like, they're all, like they don't want to be the guinea pig kind of thing where they're like, Oh, this is just a phase. Like I did nothing to prove that I was worthy of their trust in real estate previous to that. Yeah. Right. And so it was like, and then over time they start to go, Oh, you know, Chuck's starting to get good. He's starting to, you know, really, you can see the progression in the career where this is what he's going to do from now on. Yeah. He's reached his grown up profession. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that, that's basically, so the, 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 Two, I mean, here's another big thing that I think that uh, Dean really helped us with is the before, during, and after, being able to segment the business into three parts, where the before is all of your marketing, all of your stuff that's generated through, like, it's almost like the haven't met database to yep. an, an extent, and that would be anything from uh, buyer classes to websites or anything that kind of brings people forward, and then you have your during unit, which is your service delivery and then your after unit, your relationships and those kind of things. And so there's, there's, there's almost three businesses within our business. Yeah. And I find too, that when I learned that model, that there's a lot of coaches and trainers out there who are good at one of those things. And that's their, their whole business model. Like there's the people who are teaching how to generate clients, but they're not teaching how to actually service the clients or how to follow up with them after other people right. like Buffini, who's a real after client. Well, once you have the people in the pipeline and some people are sitting there saying, how do I actually get clients or how do I get people? And so you kind of have to make sure you have all three of those in place. 
to make very sure that few you have. agents are really good at both, right? And we've always yeah. said that's going to be our goal because of, like I said, if it's just past clients, that feels really good. But it's in many ways, there's like you're missing stuff. And yeah. if it's all new business, you're just clear cutting all the time. It's expensive. You know, it, it, it just becomes something where it's like you can burn yourself out. Yeah. We all know that, a, that like a past client calling you to list their home is is filled with far less friction than <laughs> you know like a realtor.ca lead there's just there's so much more built up there yeah. the struggle i've seen people have with the just referrals is that depending on age and demographic that they're there's kind of like life cycles and i've seen agents who they're young all their friends are buying homes and they're working with their 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 friends that they know and then like we talked about earlier they settle into the home that they're going to be in for a while. And then that business kind of like just plateaus and drops off because now they've sold them all that five bedroom family home and they're not moving for 20 years. And then if you don't replace it with that new business, you have to, and that's why I like farming because if you, when you focus on an area, there's going to be turnover regardless of who is in that area and it's going to keep changing hands and you can potentially hopefully get enough business that you can keep going with that. Right. We've done measurements. So we're typically about 15% of our uh, clients are going to repeat or refer every year. Okay. Right. So I know from that list of 500 is if you, if you do the math on 15% of that, yep. that's what we can almost count on yep. knowing that we stay in touch. And I'm not a big person for calling past clients, but you know, we like, uh, we like sending up birthday, uh, you know, Hey, it's your birthday kind of thing. Not through Facebook. Cause like a thousand people <laughs> wish you happy birthday. Yeah. On Facebook, right you know, at worst an email or a text or just something that kind of separates you from the pack. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, a couple of uh, newsletters and postcards and then client parties and, you know, and then maybe a few emails a year. Like I'm not one of those people that likes to bomb the database with emails, but like if we're running something for charity or something that I think people would want to know about, then we, then we'll send emails out. Perfect. We were doing trivia nights for a while in COVID. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we would just invite everyone. We'd say, here's the link for trivia. It's happening Thursday at seven. And it was fun. You know, it was just a good sort of silly activity to do and yeah. all the family could get involved, the kids. So were you hosting it then? Yeah, we were hosting. Awesome. So we loaded up all our questions. It was on, I think, myquiz.org right. was the, the site and uh, had a good time, had some good battles too. <laughs> and then so, we would have a Zoom room that was open. So it's like, Trivia would be in one window, Zoom right. would be in another, and we would just talk with people. You know, it's like we're all kind of having drinks and saying, hey, you know, yeah. like, yeah. Or we trash talk each other, like, oh, you got that one wrong. Eh? <laughs> like, see when, they, when you got five points and they didn't, you're like, oh, oh, that's good. I guess you didn't know the first Raptor to you know, whatever, right? Like goofy questions like that. So that perfectly ties into kind of how I want to wrap things up is, can you share with us some strategies that you've bombed on that you thought were going to be a good hit? And then if you can share some things that have one or two things that were just really solid way to grow your farm and grow your business. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I don't necessarily see farming as being a geographic thing exclusively. I think yep. you can farm a lot of different ways. And even now, if you think about the mechanics of a postcard, if they receive the physical mail, um, they might put that, postcard down or it might end up in the recycling bin but it's like you could overlay a facebook ad right where you drop the postcards and then you can almost say you know um what can i grab here that's well, anyway i'll use my water bottle it's like you'll you'll say okay see this postcard that you got like that like you can actually remind them with a facebook ad because that's what yeah. they do right kids go to bed and then they start going on their phone and you know, it's like Dean says, the universal sign of, uh, of commercials is pick up your phone and start goofing off, right? <laughs> so it's like when you see a commercial on TV, it's, it's your excuse. Well, let me grab my phone. Yeah. And, and so there's even creative things now you can do to, I don't think physical mail is dead. I think that you can complement it. And you can start yeah. to play around with the different uh, media and how people consume information. Um, I really think that the generalist is, if they're not already dead, they're, they're pretty close to being dead. Yeah. Uh, so, so choosing the niche, and I know you're a big believer in, in niche marketing too, yeah. but where we've found success has been, and I even see this, Milton Daily Homes has a certain open rate and everything else, but when we send a condo report specific for people with condos, yeah. 
the views go up, yeah. the more that you can, you can identify with somebody's exact need, yeah. that's where you really start to light it up. So the niche stuff, we've done a lot more with condos now okay. uh, because it's a definable thing. You can say, I am a condo owner. Sometimes even neighborhoods, you can call it something and they think it's something different, right? Like there's just, you get into to semantics with that, but it's very clear that I am somebody who uh, experiences the trials and tribulations of a condo yeah. property owner. Um, yeah, I think going deeper, not wider. So a big awareness for us is for years, we were, we were paying for leads, like large volume leads, right? And yeah you know, all the different website providers that do that, whether it's, you know, real geeks or bold leads or agent locator, or there's dozens of them and, yeah. and they, they work. We found for us is that we just weren't doing a great job with them. And uh, I wanted so bad to be the person who was doing a good job. <laughs> but I think that we made a, a, a big distinction this year between, okay, how do we want our business to grow? What do we, how do we want people to come in? And our dream is that we want new business who, who haven't transacted with us to come in like they're a past client. So right. to have that kind of warmth to it. Yep. And, uh, and so the listings lab with Jess Lenoville is actually like, we're in the process of creating some of our stuff through her program. Awesome. Nice. Um, but I like what she said. So she has this thing about relevance, right? So whatever message is there has to be relevant, like a condo owner that's receiving condo information. Yep. Uh, omnipresence means they feel like they see you everywhere. And then there's an intimacy too. And I love that, that triangle of those three things is to yep. say, that's really what it's about. And even with I think we've changed our approach where it's more of like a volume where you might try a couple times to get a hold of someone that doesn't work. They just sort of disappear. I think we're now recognizing and reminding ourselves that these are real people and we're going deeper. Yeah. So before we might get a, a lead and, and, you know, I'm looking for homes between 500 and $750,000 and we would just kind of, we would keep just asking them questions like qualify, qualify. Yeah. And, and I think we made a decision this year to do something like send a bomb bomb video, say, Hey, my name's Chuck. I see that you were on our website yeah. and I took the time to log into the MLS and, and this is a home that I think is really good. So those kind of things I think are the solution to the 2020 problems that agents have yeah. is just getting really focused on somebody and over serving them because I think we're now in a place where the information and the stuff that's out there is just so like, it's too much. Right. Yeah. And, and so the way that somebody, the way that you get a customer to go out of their way for you is you go out of your way for them first. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Right. 100%. Because a little bit of effort is going to lead to a little bit of effort coming back to you. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the truth is now, because it's so ubiquitous, there's just so many websites they're on two, three, even five, six phone calls, emails, it's not doing it anymore. And that's what we found, right? Like the conversion numbers are lower and lower. So we've now just, even just from an integrity standpoint and what we stand for in a business, that five-star experience, yeah. it's almost like, because the volume was there, we, we were lowering our experience level. Yeah. Versus saying, let's attract a quarter of those people, but let's yeah. really serve them much deeper and much better. I had that shift personally a, couple, a year or two ago where I was like, okay, I was getting a lot of leads. And then you're, you're not being able to service any of them correctly because you're trying to chase them all the time. And then it's like, I'm scaling back and that's why I'm relaunching right. my new farm. And it's like, I'd rather have 400 people to follow up with than 4,000 people because I can build the relationship with 400 people better and easier and stronger than 4,000 random people and versus 400 warm people that I can now, like you said, love on and, and create value for them specifically. And instead of just trying to capture as much as I can of a broad audience. But that's the push pull too, because you just said it is like the faster you chase them, the faster they run. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's like, but it's the, the whole push pull. If you can, what I like about daily homes and the condo report and sold watch and all the things that, that we've put out there is that they can count on me to send an email once a week, because I've already established that's what I'm going to do or five days a week or whatever the, the flow is for that. Yeah. 
And I like it because it gives me control over my calendar where I can say, okay, you know what? I like Monday, I got to send an email. That's, yeah. that's just what it is. Um, but then you, you set up a, a circumstance where they're almost welcoming that communication. If they're interested in what you're sending, yeah. it's like I have people sometimes when I go on vacation, I've already sent an email saying, okay, next week, no episodes. But I'll get two or three people that say, dude, like, where are you? Are you okay? <laughs> And it's so funny because that's Seth Godin said that he said, you know, um, the measure of your impact is are people going to miss you when you're gone? Yeah. And, uh, and so I really like that, that, that um, system that we've created. It's just a dependable thing. It's just like brushing your teeth. You're going to get an email from Milton Daily Homes yeah. and from me. So one of the things I know about you is you like to be creative. I know you grabbed your, uh, your signs earlier. Do you want to share oh, yeah, that yeah. with our audience just to show kind of some of the fun things that you do to, to put your own flair on things and explain? No, we, were, kind of we were heavily into like tracking. Like I, I think that I, I'm cautious about anything where you can't directly attribute a result to it, yeah. like billboards and bus shelters and everything else. But we had this fun idea. So there's two signs here. And so we've got, can you see that? <laughs> Yeah. Right. So slow down is one. And then we have this one here too, which I don't know if you're just getting the audio, but one says, slow down. Your name isn't Marty and you aren't driving a time machine. And the other one uh, says, you're not Vin Diesel and this isn't the Fast and the Furious. So incorporating some of the things we like to do, I think humor is always like, we like to have fun, you know, yeah. like it's, uh, so it, it ticks that box. The other thing is we, printed them they're at our cost there's going to be 180 of them like you talk about geographic farming like i mean what i wouldn't do to have 180 people want my sign on their lawn i mean that's yeah. a huge thing um it's it's a safety thing so it's about family and then it uh, the other thing is that there's that reciprocity factor too where um we've paid for the sign. So we know that people would be less likely to accept it if we just said, would you like a sign? Because very deep in, in human DNA says something like, well, then I'm going to feel obligated to you. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the yeah. way that you release the pressure valve is you say, we're accepting optional donations to charity. Right. So we have, so if you want the sign on your lawn, you're not going to have to pay for it because we've already covered that. Yeah because it's our marketing at the bottom, yep. fine. But I'm gonna release that valve of you feeling like you owe me something because you can make a food bank donation. Yeah. And then even Steven, we're squared, right? And that doubles um, up because now they know that you care about the community twice right. because they, you care about wanting to slow down and you care that you want them to donate to another cause. So they're seeing you as twice the good cause instead of just one, which is awesome. That's what I mean. I'm just keeping their kids safe and we're together. We're now benefiting, you know, an organization that needs help, which is yeah. food. It's a bit like food and shelter, are two things that are pretty important to surviving. Yeah. Um, and I've always thought that too, and not to take anything away from any other organizations. I mean, there's Royal page has, has a great shelter foundation and, children's miracle but i've always just thought like food like what if you were hungry right there's yep. just you know everything else like a trip to disney world just seems secondary <laughs> if you're if you're hungry right yeah um so uh, yeah that's that's the the thing we're doing and and anything it's so simple if you just think about charity as just an add-on for whatever you do. If you run a client event, you know, and people feel, oh my God, like you're, you're doing a movie day, you're giving me popcorn and you just say, hey, you know what, we've got a bin at the front, bring some old clothing or food. Yeah. And it's amazing just by that one little thing, how much you can actually collect. Like we've donated thousands of pounds of food to the food bank. Yeah. We do it with the buyer classes and with investor classes. You are going to bring us when we used to do them physically. Now we do them virtually because it's yeah. all COVID stuff. Um, but it's just like, hey, just bring something. That's your ticket for admission. I don't want to charge you money. Although some people forget the food and they just say, well, here's 20 bucks. Yeah. I don't care. It goes right to the where it needs to go. And I find that in my experience, a lot of agents struggle with not knowing what to send or what to do. And when you add a charity element, it, there's so many touch points that you can use in that without even having to discuss real estate to be able to still be in front of people by 
doing the marketing around it, you get a touch point. If you're dropping off, if you're doing, I know people do like bags for the food drive and they drop them off or right. they're picking it up. There's a touch point there or there's a thank you note after and there's a video after and then there's a, here's a how many, how much we collect and there's so many different touch points that you can do without even having to discuss real estate, but still option opportunities for real estate peppered in there. And by doing that, like you're killing two birds with one stone in that you have a reason to stay in touch with people without having to say, are you thinking of selling your house when you know, they told you, no, I'm not moving for 10 years. So it, right. it gives you value to stay in touch with people. And I think it's an awesome opportunity for people. I just think the two things that are always welcomed is like, is gratitude, like being genuinely thankful about anything yep. and, and contribution, right. Yep. Where you're actually kind of giving back to people is, you know, even in the business, one of our, one of our core values is really just to kind of lead with the giving hand, right. Is yeah. to say, okay, you know, that's, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to expect anything from you. I'm just going to give this because it's, it's in my being to be a giving spirit. And I think too, with, with that, it, it, it basically helps people to give have opportunities to give, which they may not necessarily take that opportunity. They may not right. think to give. So then when they start seeing the whole community as a whole doing that, it strengthens that community as well. When they see, wow, our community really came together and we did this and we raised this much money and they feel something part, part of something greater than just I gave something. When they can see that as a whole, that this community did this and it just, I think it also helps them buy into the community, which is awesome too. Right. And you can bring your partners in. We've had things like uh, Salvation Army. We've had a, one of those big uh, buckets at our office. And we've actually had like social media things where we've put it out to say, okay, if this bucket gets filled, we're going to give a few hundred dollars. And then this mortgage broker who we work with is also going to give $250 yeah. or whatever it is. So you can start to bring in other businesses to help with good causes. Yeah. Because every business on some level, if they're doing well, I mean, we've all had to tighten our belts a bit, but yeah. they want to give back. They want to be seen as, as uh, businesses that care, yeah. uh, especially locally, right? Yeah. Like not necessarily, like I said, the Home Depots of the world and those kind of things. They try, but you can never beat, <laughs> you can never beat the local. And that's even what we were talking about. Like when an agent works in a different area, you might be a good researcher, you might be a good negotiator and everything else but you're never going to beat someone with equal skills and they know the area. Yep, it's exactly. impossible. Right? And that $250 is better spent than $250 on online ads. You may get 25 leads for that, but the odds of you even getting a deal from, it, even if you get a deal from it, it doesn't online ads doesn't bring the community together and doesn't help create you as an ambassador for the community. I don't know if it's better or worse. Cause you've got to gauge different levels. Like what's your scorecard? Like for me, yeah. I'd like to make the, the people around me better right? Like there's, maybe you can get business from 25 leads. I don't yep. know. Yeah. Yeah. I just mean that it's like, if, if you're trying to create that a community ambassador feel $250 visually is like, is probably will be seen by a lot more people and, and have potentially a more impact in the community than just online ads that no one's going to see except yeah. for other people. I think any money or time spent intentionally is, is like with a plan and a purpose and, and with the right mindset and heart set, yep. it's going to work out well. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, you've been a great first guest and I know that our listeners will definitely really take a lot out of this. So is there any last words you want to share? Oh boy. I don't know. <laughs> I, I will say something that, um, one of the, the byproducts of, of COVID and just trimming expenses and everything else, because we actually looked and we cut 30% of our spend wow. uh, just because we knew it's just time to do that. Business is probably not going to be super crazy, but yep. I just think like there's so many good um, ideas out there that really are at minimal cost. And we've talked about like you and I have talked offline about training and, and everything else. And yeah. there's just, I, I think that uh, we're at the point where that even during the start of COVID, when we saw one of the organizers of the buzz conference yeah. and we were putting hours and hours of stuff out there that was just gold. And there's so much out there. Start from that place. Yeah. You know, you're either going to spend time or money, sometimes a combination of both, but I just think, uh, you know, you can, the answers are out there for whatever you need. 
And I think another uh, final thought is that we didn't reinvent the wheel. We just kind of, we had a couple of cool ideas along the way, but a lot of what we've built is a hybrid of, you know, Joe Stump's by referral only, uh, Dean Jackson, you know, some, some other people, Kathleen Black was a big influence, Ken Goodfellow. Yeah. Uh, they all kind of come together to build what you have, but 5% of my business is actually unique ideas. Yeah. It's layering those ideas together and stitching it together to create your brand and who you are and how you want to grow your business, but you're piecing it together with different ideas that yeah, you, you are. Didn't and it, yeah. But it's got to feel right. It's yeah. you're not just going to put on a pair of pants <laughs> because it's cheap or whatever. It's going to fit it on. Cause it's like, that's who you are. Cause yeah. you feel good when they're on. So awesome. Good. I appreciate well, I it. it. Yeah. Thanks very much. And uh, hopefully our audience will definitely get a lot of this. So thanks. John. I hope so too. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you'd like more videos like this, be sure to sub like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming. <laughs>